Hi, I'm Ted Venema. Let's talk now about auto-acoustic emissions. This particular vignette follows logically after having seen the one on acoustic reflexes. Whereas acoustic reflexes were a test of the acoustic reflex arc and what hair cells are involved in the acoustic reflex arc, the inner hair cells, well, the auto-acoustic emissions are a quick and non-behavioral test of the outer hair cells. Tympanometry and acoustic reflexes emerged in the 1970s. Autoacoustic emissions emerged in the 1990s. The 90s was a rather exciting decade in our field because that's when knowledge of the difference between inner and outer hair cells became routine, commonplace in, common, in clinical practice. So when we are looking at the whole ear as a system, let's look at it as a series of transductions, a series of changes. Sound is gathered by the outer ear. Sound waves then are changed or transduced by the middle ear into mechanical piston-like energy. And that mechanical energy is now received by the cochlea where it is changed or transduced into hydraulic energy in the form of traveling waves. And this hydraulic energy is changed or transduced by hair cells into electrical current which is sent up the eighth cranial nerve to the brain. So we've got a lot of transductions in action happening here. Now let's look, zoom in a little closer to those outer hair cells. That's quite something. This slide is showing you inner and outer hair cells in motion. And you can see that the inner hair cells are rather fat and rounded. They are all what they call, they are afferent. They're sending all sound information to the brain. The outer hair cells are efferent. They're taking information from the brain. And they shrink. Notice when they shrink, they pull this membrane down to bend those hair cells. The end result is this. The end result, this is a picture of the sharpening and amplification of the traveling wave. This is the basilar membrane, the floor upon which all the hair cells stand. High frequency hair cells, mid frequency and low frequency hair cells. In this particular example, we see a low frequency traveling wave with a peak in the low frequencies. Well, the outer hair cells, by that mechanical motion that you saw, the result is a sharpening, it's amplifying and sharpening the peak of that traveling wave so that this person is able to distinguish now between frequencies that are very close together, whereas he or she was, would not be able to do that without outer hair cells. Without outer hair cells, you've got a broad traveling wave stimulating many frequencies at once. And this is why people with mild to moderate sensory neural loss have difficulty separating speech from background noise because they can't separate frequencies that are close together. Enough on that. Let's talk about how the outer hair cells are assessed with autoacoustic emissions. OAEs, autoacoustic emissions testing, involves a probe just like tympanometry did or does, but the probe doesn't have to be airtight sealed. The probe, like tympanometry, however, has three holes. The one hole emits a tone, a second hole emits a second tone, and the third is a mic that picks up the resultant autoacoustic emission. The main requirement for OAEs is that the room is quiet. But again, the probe isn't airtight sealed. Now it's interesting, the relationship between these two tones, we call it frequency one and frequency two. There has to be a strict ratio relationship between those two tones. For example, well, let's just say it, the ratio has to be 1 to 1.2. So for example, if frequency 1 is 1,000 hertz, frequency 2 has to be about 1,200 hertz. They've got to be They've got to be at that particular ratio. And when they're at that particular ratio and put into the ear at around 60 to 70 dB, SPL, sound pressure level, when that happens, a third tone comes out of the ear. It's actually the ear working in reverse. What's very interesting is that the autoacoustic emissions indicate that the cochlea is an amplifier. 
And like all amplifiers, it has distortion. All amplifiers distort. Anyone with stereo systems or knowledge of that knows there's always some distortion. Well, we know now that the cochlea, the outer hair cells, amplify soft sounds so that the inner hair cells can pick them up. We can recall from earlier vignettes here that we gave that inner hair cells send info to the brain, but inners can't pick up sounds below conversational speech. They need that mechanical action of the outer hair cells to help them pick up soft sounds like 10, 20, 30, and 40 dB. And so that amplification action done in the cochlea because of that, there's a price to pay, and that price is some distortion, and that distortion is an auto-acoustic emission. That's why they call them sometimes distortion product, auto-acoustic emissions. Isn't that wild? At any rate, OAEs are only detectable if a person has good functioning outer hair cells. If there's outer hair cell damage, you won't have OAEs. OAEs are not great for testing degree of loss, however. OAEs are best used as a screening tool. Does a person have good, healthy hair cells, or does a person not? They're either present or they're absent. It can't be really used to assess degree of loss. But if you have someone malingering, I couldn't think of a better test to do. At any rate, let's just go to the next slide and I'll show you what's done in OAEs. Here's speaker one. Speaker 2, this is the probe in the ear, and there's the mic in the probe that's picking up the sound. The two tones are delivered in the ear canal, going through the middle ear system to the cochlea, and the outer hair cells, because they are amplifying, they're distorting, and they send out an autoacoustic emission back out through the middle ear system, out through the ear canal, being picked up by the mic. So literally, they are the ear working in reverse. It's interesting. Here's what they look like, actually, on a spectrum. You'll see frequency 1 put in the ear, frequency 2 put in the ear, and the third one is actually lower. The relationship is this. Of the, the relationship of the OAE is, is written down in, a, in, in an equation like this. It's 2 times F1 in frequency minus F2. So in the example, if this was 1,000 hertz and that's 1,200 hertz, it would be 2,000 hertz, two, th two times 1,000, minus 1,200 equals whatever, 800 or something. My math isn't great, but you know what I mean. Here's your, your distortion product OAE. If this is present, you've got the emission. If it's not, you don't. Autoacoustic emissions. It highlights the term we use for sensory neural hearing loss. The term sensory really refers to outer hair cells. The term neural really refers to inner hair cells. Neural damage, inner hair cell pathology, ruins speech discrimination. Outer hair cell pathology compromises it a bit. But that's why the term sensory neural is that term. Sensory outer, neural inner. And he's, that OAE kind of brings that together, especially when we discuss them with acoustic reflexes. Acoustic reflexes test inner hair cells as a non-behavioral test. OAEs assess outer hair cell pathology as a non-behavioral test. Both are great cross tests to be used because both are equally obliterated by middle ear pathology. Uses again, infant screening, malingering, and assessing if someone's hearing is normal from someone who cannot or will not respond norm in a normal behavioral way. Thanks for listening. It's been a slice.